I don't want to set the world on fire. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us this evening or morning, depending on when you're listening to the episode. I am Robert of the Folia Man, along with my co-host, Chris, and our fine friend uh, and guest uh, today, a uh, really honored guest, I should say, Mime Zynga. Hi there, people. Thank you very, very much. So tonight's episode is a, a little special. Uh, we figured that since we just wrapped up Pink Eyes, that now would be a good opportunity. I think Chris, you and Mime Zynga had kind of been talking about this in the background for a while, but an opportunity for us to come together and kind of talk to the author and wrap up the story and kind of some of the ideas we have. Uh, Chris, do you want to take it away? Yes, uh, for those who are unaware, uh, those who are just joining us or those who have no idea where in the world you are or what you're doing, uh, Mime Zynga is the author of the Fallout Equestria derivative work, Pink Eyes, which stars Puppy Smiles, a small horse who is completely out of time and place, um, who has to deal with the adventures of trying to find their mother. The Ghost of the Wasteland. The Ghost of the Wasteland. Um, and we're here today with Mime Zynga to ask a few questions. This is a kind of small Q&A interview for those who are interested in uh, Pink Eyes and Puppy Smiles and everything related to that. So um, I want to start off by saying uh, thank you, Mime Zynga, for joining us and uh, doing an interview with us. And uh, how about you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself? Oh, yes. Here I am. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm... Uh, uh, could say an old time brownie since now I'm kind of 40 and uh, well uh, I haven't written anything since uh, because so I'm not even sure if I'm still in the community <laughs> but uh, well it's very nice to be here and to chat about uh, this old uh, one of mine and uh, to see that there is still people who likes it okay um let's go ahead with a few questions we have here for you um the first question was what inspired you to write thank guys well this is a, a question with an obvious answer and the main inspiration was fallout equestria uh, <clears throat> the reason why I decided to write something was mostly because uh, I wanted uh, to uh, practice my English, which has not really improved, but uh, I tried really hard, and uh, I hope that what it counts, that's what it counts. And uh, well, the other reason that uh, I that made me write the story was because I was uh, I really deeply loved Fallout Equestria, by far. And I so much wanted to play a game, a role-playing game about Fallout Equestria. So I tried to uh, persuade my friends of the role-playing group to play uh, some sort of improvised version of Fallout the Western role-playing game for, for, for Savage Worlds, and they said me, heck no, and <laughs> also something on the, on the line of, you are a fag, and... Uh, <laughs> So I said, I went to Bender and I said, oh, yeah, so I will make my own story with Black Jack and Hookers. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you were too late and Project Horizons was already started, but that's still a good plan. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Project Horizon, uh, the, hey, I want spoiler, but there is a chapter in Project Horizon that gave me the idea, some a couple of ideas of uh, about uh, puppy smiles. But I want spoiler. I will probably uh, write uh, on the proper appropriate uh, episode of uh, with your next review. When it happens, then well, this is where I took the idea for, and I'm not saying anything because uh, it will be a spoiler, and you hate spoiler. I was already <laughs> scalded. I don't want to be scalded again. <laughs> uh, well, that's it's funny you should say that because that kind of led into what my next question was going to be, but we're going to have to glaze right over it because I was going to ask what was the inspiration for Puppy Smiles, and it's uh, 
I, I wanted to know if it was based on anybody that you knew or if it came from another piece of literature, but it sounds like it was slightly inspired by um, well, Project well, Horizons. No, Project Horizons gave me a, an idea how to solve a problem I had in mind. Mm. A, a good idea. Gotcha. That, and, uh, and I used it. But uh, Puppy Smiles were most, was mostly inspired by, uh, well, uh, all those little girls from uh, American cartoons like uh, Dot from the Animaniacs uh, or, uh, or, you know, all the bouncy little kids that yeah. uh, the happy go lucky. Bubbles from Powerpuff Girls. Yes, yes, yes. That kind of that kind of character. In fact, uh, she doesn't have a real age. See, her age is uh, little cartoon girl. Yeah. You can't say really because sometimes they act like they are three. Some other times they act like they are fifteen. Yeah. Uh, but generally, you understand them because they are part of some sort of large group. The other inspiration is obviously the Ghost Rider. Because, you know, uh, running down a road, uh, gathering the sounds of the damned and saving get, the good people. Get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> we we read this odd entire amalgamation. Story. And never and never made a connection to the Ghost Rider. And I love Marvel comics. I should have picked up on that. <laughs> yeah, she's the Ghost Rider. She's an has burning. She is an has burning eyes and yeah. a burning school. <laughs> yep. Nope. That's uh. Yeah. Just right over. Well, my head. that's on you, Robert. That is completely on you. So that is. We no, also want uh, to ask. Um, are there any other characters from the show that were inspired by maybe uh, people uh, from your own life? Well, people or, from, from people here I know on, in life, I'd say no, because uh, uh, when I uh, when I decided to get into the brawny community, it was a very personal thing. So I used to keep my everything in my personal life outside of it, and uh, it was a way to stay in a place that was just for me, okay? And uh, uh, it's hard to say, I don't think. It's a lot of people are obviously inspired from anime, comics, uh, movies, uh, uh, just a simple, uh, uh, as, you, as you say, it, a simple pub stuff. Just, just you know, the, the hard-boiled, the hard mercenary people from role-playing games a lot of character are inspired from characters from role-playing games i played maybe not even mine but uh, i i'm a role player i play a lot and uh, i uh, made a lot of npcs and player characters so a lot of them are in this are in this story or a version of them obviously they were not ponies when i played them there are some just Henrietta is the Gaslinger girl. That is uh, the title of an anime, of uh, an old time anime from the 90s. But it was just uh, a nodding to the title. There aren't really pers people in uh, that story that are like her. It was just, uh, you know, a quote, uh, a nod. So a little bit of a change of pace. You know, when you were plotting out the story and you were laying things out, what what made you decide to write specifically from Puppy Smile's perspective, you know, a first person perspective as opposed to like a third person perspective? Well, uh, this was a question I didn't have, I didn't understand because it is from the it is a third person uh, imperfect narrator. Is a, the story is not exactly from Puppy Smile's. It sees things as Puppy Smile sees them, but at some point uh, it goes a little out and uh, look from above and give another under vision. Uh, making the story from the point of having Puppy Smile as the protagonist, so having everything centered there was because uh, uh, it looked like fun. Mm. Uh, the idea was to have uh, some 
person, the tamponi that wasn't able to uh, really get uh, what is uh, the bad ending, because you know cartoon girls never get a bad ending. Everything right. was always good, and it never goes bad for them. So that wouldn't even consider things to be wrong in a place where everything was wrong. Right. Well, and it's interesting too. You know, Puppy Smiles is 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 she's the kind of archetypical character that is usually the foil to someone else, and that we don't normally get to see the first person perspective of these jumpy, bouncy, energetic, you know, uh, playful characters. They're usually like relief um, in stories in a way. So I, I think it was really interesting, still, that from your perspective, to, to 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 that we get to see how she sees the world rather than seeing other people just reacting to how she. Oh, yes. Okay. This could be a very long thing. I will try to keep it short. I will keep it short. Uh, when the people from my group told me, no, you are a fuck, we are not playing with ponies. Uh, well, Puppy Smiles, I already had in mind a campaign, a game, and Puppy Smiles was the comic relief of the campaign. Mm. The characters were going to to uh, start from the outskirts where uh, Puppy Smiles get, uh, finds the, the place with the, the Pinkie Pie robot, the carnival. From there, they will have uh, uh, an adventure down the road uh, up to the final battle with the, uh, uh, with the, with the riders at the, at the Iron Works. But, uh, the group never played the game, so we needed a different. We needed a different hero. Who was the hero? Puppy Smiles. Mm. So she was an NPC. Gotcha. That makes that makes total sense. You so you know when hero don't show uh, don't show up for uh, the fight, someone else will have to make it do. If the mountain won't go, oh, well, if Puppy Smiles won't go to the mountain, the mountain must come to Puppy Smiles. Mm. Exactly. The rod, which uh, is a living character, the spirit of the 52, and to wake up a hero. And uh, Puppy Smiles was uh, the girl that had a mother and a father dead along the road. And she was dead on the other side. She was dead on the top. The mother was dead at the bottom and the father was dead in the middle so she her story was along the whole road she incarnated the road and the road animated her to may to save the, to save the day okay um a question for you uh, as well um did you when you first started out uh did you have the same idea for how the story ended do you have an idea of um, how it was going to end, and was it separate from what actually happens in the story? Yes and no. Yes, because I always had in mind the scene with the blimp, with the uh, uh, with the Zeppelin, mm -hmm. the friend force, the friend force one. I knew that I wanted the puppies mice to jump off of it and run towards her mother, her mother. But I didn't know how uh, it would have gone. So, uh, mostly uh, the two final chapters, the ones with the battle, uh, they were rewritten like three times. I, I had a vague idea of what I wanted and what was, uh, uh, how to time the things. The you know the first seven chapters to introduce the character and the world, then uh, another six, eight-ish chapters to have uh, the story develop in my way, and then have the final four, six chapters to uh, have a climax and an ending. That was the idea how I wanted the story to be, but I didn't really know. Uh, especially what I wanted to have in the final last six chapters when I started the story. Now, now knowing that the story is complete now, I mean, it's done. No reason to ever go back and retouch it, though. Are, are there anything that you look back on and think, 
well, maybe I would have had this event play out a little bit differently, or there was a vignette that maybe didn't make it into the story. Was there anything that you would do differently in the story if you were to you know, be rewriting it anew? Well, there was. There was some scenes that I wasn't happy with, especially in the first chapters. Um, uh, some uh, problems got a, a very simple and straightforward solution that wasn't that fun, okay? And in the past, I had a thought of a pre of touching something or writing a chapter to uh, have it uh, end in the same way, but go differently. But uh, now, no. At the moment, uh, it's been a long time, and uh, when I read the story, I like it as it is, mostly because uh, when uh, it was planned, uh, it was a, a story made of smoke and mirrors. Uh, if you stop and read it very slowly and analyze the parts, you see that uh, there are a lot of things that make no sense at all. If you read it just going, it, it goes smoothly. Uh, so why touch something that works? Absolutely. And uh, especially after six, seven years, <laughs> right. I would leave it as it is because uh, I'm afraid that uh, just uh, moving some parts will make it uh, collapse or I should, I will have to uh, rewrite it completely. Yeah. That was a, uh, I do remember that being a concern mm -hmm. slightly for the original story, the original Fall of Equestria. Hey, cat, not wanting to go back and even do so much as to uh, edit grammar because she seemed it, it was more of a what copy is the original copy, what copy is the um, what version is the actual version people should stick with, and the fear of uh, changing meaning behind certain events within it, and people trying to argue about implementation, which knowing this fandom is a very, very real possibility. I do want to ask you, though, just completely blue sky in it here, uh, what would a sequel to Pink Eyes look like? <laughs> this is a very fun question because there is a sequel, but it's not a story. It's our own playing game campaign. <laughs> <laughs> we played it, and uh, it went on for one year and a an half, and uh, it was about... Uh, uh, do you remember in the ending uh, where uh, the uh, where a watcher or questioner, let's call him a questioner now, uh, <laughs> says that uh, says that uh, molten gold uh, uh, disappeared on a boat uh, heading south with a group of heroes, uh, of Westland heroes, and was never seen uh, since then. Well, that was where the other story started. Turns out that, uh, well, uh, they did something to uh, save uh, the uh, uh, the Solaris from its own legacy. There was a couple of Solaris survivors, and uh, there was all a story about this in a faraway land full filled with wonders like uh, dinosaurs, the Bullisaurus Rex, uh, and uh, other things uh, taken uh, from a lot of ideas. The group was uh, quite a good group, and we had a lot of fun, but telling it uh, would take a long time, so we avoided it. Oh, yeah, heaven forbid. So what you're saying is, the sequel already exists, you just gotta put the uh, the pen to paper from your uh, your campaign notes. Yeah, yes, we, we had a, a group of uh, uh, notes that uh, summarized what happened, but it, they you won't understand them uh, if you read them, because you have to know what was everything about. So mm. it's useless. <laughs> they, are useless. Yeah. They, are very, they are very fun, but they can't help anyone <laughs> understanding it unless you played it. And also, it is uh, as it was meant to be. Finally, I got a group to play my game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what you're saying con. is, hold on, hold on. I just I want to figure this out. So what you're saying, Mimezinga, is that you wrote this book as a big flashy advertisement to find people who would come play My Little Pony tabletop with you. You you can say it this way. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, it, it, it was uh, to say that I'm not uh, making it up now. If you go on the comments of the story, in the very first comments, you will read this thing. I oh yeah, I wrote this because I my, my group didn't want to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> I was whining about it. <laughs> There's a little bit of history. So on, on that note, Mimesinga, what would you say is your favorite Fallout Equestria side story? So besides Fallout Equestria, besides Pink Eyes, which you wrote, like what, what ranks up there as one of your favorites? Well, uh, I'm in the group, I'm in the community. I was in the community at the beginning, and now I drifted away because of time. And uh, we used to read each other's story. And at the time, there were like uh, 20, 30 of them. And uh, saying that I like a story more than, more than another would be like a knife in the back of someone. Ah. So I will go classical and I say that uh, one of my favorite stories at the time was Fallout Equestria Heroes. But uh, there were a lot of good stories, and a lot of them simply were put on hiatus and never went on. <clears throat> to say a couple names, uh, Morality of Property or uh, Misfits were two very good stories that uh, I never uh, had uh, the joy to finish reading because they never finished. I realize I kind of gave you a Sophie's choice there. It's like asking a mother which child is her favorite um, <laughs> in front of the other children. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy to answer. No, no not at all. Sorry. Um, uh, would you say that actually on that note, there were any stories outside of Fallout Equestria that inspired you uh, during writing? Maybe a different, maybe a fable or a tale or a folk story. Well, yes, yes, there was a story, uh, actually more than one, a lot of stories, but uh, one especially was, was, the title was Bittersweet, yes, Bittersweet, and uh, it was about uh, Pinkie Pie dying of diabetes, diabetes, I don't know in English the, the name of the illness, but it's when you can't control your sugar in the uh, blood yeah, diabetes yeah okay diabetes and uh, then uh, it was a very sad story in you have to think that we are talking about the first year of the fandom and every idea was uh, mostly interesting because it was something new about the about the the fandom about the, what you could do to enrich the community. So I wasn't picky about the writing style or anything else. If it was a, if it had an idea that made me think, oh yeah, I would like to see something like that, I'd read it. And this, uh, this one, Bittersweet, I liked it. And uh, the idea that uh, stories about ponies could be sad, but also some in some way fun even if they didn't have an happy ending made me think well yes i could do i could pull something like that with the uh, fallout equestria great a little bit of change of pace we've, we've been talking a lot about the fandom we've been talking a lot about the derivative works i kind of want to touch on fallout actually for a minute uh you know since that's how i came to these stories not as a brony not anything because i mean i knew my little pony was important to chris but it's kind of like you said it's like oh i mean that show for little girls um <laughs> and i've always been understanding chris is one of my oldest friends and i like i knew he wouldn't be into it if there wasn't a good reason uh behind it but on that note since my background is is with the video game fallout you know what do you think is the best fallout title how, how many of them have you actually played oh you want to start a war okay <laughs> <laughs> some men just want to watch the world burn <laughs> okay uh, let's see uh, yes uh in the, the new fallout i think fallout new vegas is probably the best one because of the story it tells and the way you can play into the story uh, Fallout 4 is a 
a way to try to of Bethesda tries to do something like Fallout New Vegas in another place, but uh, I don't think they succeed. They succeed as well as uh, the old Obsidian group uh, did with New Vegas. I still like New Vegas more as a story. Uh, if you are talking about the whole Fallout uh, brand, uh, well. Uh, probably Fallout 2, but uh, everyone knows that uh, Fallout 1 and 2 are mostly going together because Fallout 1 was very short and it almost looked like uh, a intro for the real game that was the Fallout 2 that was a lot bigger, there was a lot more story to it, but uh, well, the emotion that the first intro of Fallout gave me with the one with the television going on with the, the um, advertising and uh, the whole the whole house destroyed. Uh, well, that that feeling, I think I never felt it again as strongly as for the first Fallout. So my heart says one, my mind says, says two, the fandom asked for me to say New Vegas. Wow, Chris, he named every single one except the one you and I both really like. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> what, what, is the, what is the one you really like? Brotherhood of Steel. Mean, that, was a really, that was a really long answer for you to just say Pinkie Pie. Come on. Uh, no, it's, uh, no, I'm, I'm, jo I'm joking. Bro uh, no, it's not Brotherhood of Steel. It's Brotherhood of Steel. Brotherhood of Steel, which was the Xbox release that everyone likes to forget exists because it's awful. No, 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 no. I, I, I remember it. It is, it is in the drawer of the forgotten titles, exactly <laughs> on the same in, on, on the on the line with the uh, the one from XCOM, XCOM Enforcer. Yes, you don't know, you don't know it. Well, well. Study. It was uh, another strategy game in terms of turned into a first-person shooter, and it was absolute shit. So yeah, <laughs> welcome to the club. But it makes it two. <laughs> he has company. Brother of Steel is not alone. I liked a lot the one with the. It was a tactical too. It was. Uh... Oh no, no why. Uh, wait, no, Brothers of Steel is, is the tactical one. The one where you have a squad. Oh, that's Brotherhood. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Tactics. That's Fallout. Oh, no, tactics. Fallout Tactics. Okay, no, Fallout Tactics. Fallout Tactics was a good one. It was a nice, sto nice story, but a bit out of uh, character to me. But it was nice. That seems to be the general consensus on it. I actually have it, but I've never played it, which is odd. <clears throat> um... No, if you ask me, it was just too long. Uh, you had to play this sort of ginormous uh, uh, levels that were three, four hours long to play. You, the idea was good, but the realization was really, no, thank you, no, very, too long. I can't really stand a game that goes on for four hours on the same stage. <laughs> I can understand. Um, now we've ta talked a little bit about the um, about the fandom. What are your thoughts on the fandom as a whole over the period of time that you've known it? The Fallout well, Equestria fandom. Uh, fandom of Fallout Equestria. Well, uh, both Fallout Equestria and uh, the My Little Pony's fandom uh, had something very important. It was the will of the fans to make stuff to produce something they were very 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 creative everyone even those that didn't feel so talented tried it anyway because they wanted to contribute they wanted to be there they wanted to uh, be part of it just not just lurking but uh, by providing material giving stuff new stuff they had in mind they had it i had this good idea will someone help me go on with this oh yeah sure i mean count me in uh, this this worked even for pink eyes uh, it was a lot worse before i got uh, uh, you see that was the guy that my editor he, he, he helped me a lot but they he had an idea i wanted to 
to uh, write it down and I have no idea of how to write it down well, but uh, I got help and everyone helped everyone at the time, or, or at least there was people willing to help, a lot of people. Uh, I don't know at the, nowadays how it is, but I see there is still a lot of creativity about it, just uh, it's a lot harder to make the cut, to be uh, good enough to be noticed. Uh, in the early days, uh, this cut was a lot lower. So where do you see, like, the fandom moving forward? Like, what do you think the future of Fallout Equestria is? Well, the show stopped, so I don't think it will go on forever, but I think that a lot of people will identify themselves as Bronies for a long, long time, because I don't see a single reason why they should say, no, no, I don't want to be part of it, I don't want to, I want to forget everything about it. There was a lot of good stuff and the good things happening at the time, so I, it will probably will die when the old guard uh, will die. And the old guard is pretty much everyone at the moment. <laughs> yeah. True. I mean, Chris, you had some first-hand experience with kind of where the fandom's at when you went to the convention. But um, do you think the numbers that you saw there were just kind of because people think things are coming to an end that they saw it as one last hurrah? Uh, definitely, the one the convention numbers were definitely the hurrah. But that's because they announced and uh, advertised that it was going to be the last one, so that's to be expected. However, I think it surprised a lot of people how many <clears throat> like how many people showed up. So that's always a good thing. Um, now, speaking of that greater fandom, I'm Zingo. What are your thoughts on that actual larger MLP fandom, the bronies and everything? Well, I think I already replied to that. Uh, mostly I have the same feeling. I see Fallout Equestria as some sort of a mirror of the larger of the larger fandom, mostly because of people uh, that are in Fallout Quest are, I think, by 98% uh, also Bronies. So uh, it's like uh, talking of a subgroup of a larger group. So I, I have the same feelings, I think, uh, that this, the same that was said about uh, these will be said about the other. Hmm. I wonder if there would be an uptick again with you know a successful Fallout game coming on. I mean, y'all were more in the community than I was when Fallout 4 came out. Did y'all see kind of an uptick in people who were who were bronies getting into Fallout Equestria? Or I, I wish that there was, but I, I, I don't know whether it's because Fallout 4 had such a weak story delivery system uh, or what it was. We were really expecting there to be a lot more people and it ended up not actually happening um, surprisingly, but um, perhaps a, an actual more inspired Fallout uh, could drive such a thing. What I'm hearing is that we need to drag Cake Out out of retirement and force her to write the uh, the next Fallout Equestria. Fallout Equestria to win with with sense. Uh, no. <laughs> well, uh, except they'd be changelings, right? Yeah. Well, uh, Cake Out wrote uh, Fallout Equestria inspired by Fallout Three. And uh, she actually brought it uh, uh, with the knowledge of someone who played the first Wasteland. I didn't, I never played it. So, well, if she liked, if she decided to write a story about the tree, which is a good story, but still, well, uh, different from the usual Fallout feeling, more grim. A uh, lot less of comedy, uh, very serious, and uh, stuff like this. Well, uh, maybe he, she will be inspired by something if she sees something new. If she sees something new, maybe it's possible. You heard it here, Todd Howard. We know you're listening. Either that or she's Harper Lee, where she had one story to tell, and now that she's written it, she'll never release another book. No! <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. If she doesn't release a book, I can understand her. She went quite, especially at the first, in the first period when uh, there was this 
you went to read the story on Google Docs, and there yeah. was a chat, and there was a chat on Google Docs where everyone was talking about the story while reading it, uh, and uh, it was uh, like uh, every two light was a like, cat. You there, cat? You there? Well, you feel like stalked, and yeah. uh, you know doesn't help so i don't know if she wants to go through all that again all over right, from right. the top that, so well and, and pressure, and, pressure to perform you know oh yeah no, i think yeah. i think the um if i were in the same position and i actually had a story to write um i think what i would do is write the entire thing have it shat, like have it secretly edited and then drop the entire thing all at once and then say bye wink Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> I joined this wink. I will say nothing. I will say not to a sequel, but you know, do whatever you want. <laughs> I have a, I, I have wondering, kind of getting back on on My Little Pony, because I know every Brony feels a little differently about this mime Zynga. Like, did you continue to watch the show? Did you have you watched all the seasons, or did you drop off with the you know the main show? And there was an episode, it was episode 100, it was a great giant uh, tribute to the internet community. Uh, that was also hinted that it was the last uh, time where they would have done something like that, just like, just like uh, yes, uh, okay, you, we know you exist, thank you for the ride, see you next uh, century, and uh, from now on, just remember, we are doing it, this for selling toys and uh, uh, for little girls. So don't get angry if the quality won't survive the show. Mm -hmm. So I kind of stopped watching it uh, one season later. And uh, I just uh, came back for uh, the arc with the Friendship Academy, but not the whole thing, just... Uh, Two thirds of that season, I think it was season nine, and uh, or ten, not sure. And then I watched the ending because you can't uh, skip it. There, there is a, a last, there is a last, there is a last episode. You watch the last episode. That's it. Right. Who was um? Who were some of your favorite characters from the show? Oh yes, uh, you want make me say something that will make me will get me killed okay no no uh, no i said i said some of okay well uh, to me it is rarity but uh, i had the uh, strong feelings also for uh, fluttershy tax horse <laughs> rarity <laughs> oh, rarity i like the lot of her character she's uh, just uh, what i like uh, in this uh, story that's it um, now you had mentioned earlier on that when you had approached your regular gaming group that they had said, um, in nicer terms, get lost, we're not going to do that. Um, exactly. Are there, have you noticed, have you ever been to any conventions in your area or are there, are there any people in your area, um, or any population wise? Well, I, uh, no, I was mostly alone, and uh, at, at work, there are people who are brownies, but I work in a city, it's not big, but still, uh, some people, I, I work in a shop, and some of the people that uh, come into the shop uh, are brownies, since uh, sometimes I wear uh, my little pony badge, uh, they see it and they nod to me and uh, we have we chat a little but uh, i didn't really met a community just uh, a couple of uh, get together at some uh, big uh, event that wasn't uh, brony oriented we once got chased out from the uh, uh, from the stand of hasbro at luca comics and game <laughs> that counts jeez okay <laughs> Freaking harsh. Um, no, 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 no. We went too far. They start, the, the things started very friendly, but, uh, well, people never know where to stop. But uh, the lucky part was that since I, I was there for work, I was at the stand of a friend helping, keeping it. So when it happened, I wasn't there. That's good. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, yes, yes. Not being chased away by Hasbro when you're uh, when you work with Magic the Gathering is a good idea. <laughs> Just not to anger your employer, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I know you shared this with Chris and I earlier, but I would love it if you would feel comfortable. Would you share the story with where your handle Mime Zynga came from? Well, yes, I will be. I will try to be fast about this, but uh, when I was very little, the kindergarten, uh, to keep us uh, kids uh, quiet, the, the teachers used to, uh, the nurses maybe, I don't know the term, used to uh, show us uh, uh, cartoons, but they didn't have VHS, VHS. They had a, a, re, the, a projector with a reel and it was mute and it also was white and black so we used to, to, from one of the things we used to watch was uh, uh, the great Mazinger, uh, a robot from uh, anime from gonagai famous and uh, it was white and black black and white and also mute so it was like a mime so mime zinga and uh, well the name is some sort of long lost memory of my childhood since uh, you know I go on internet to play I like to remember the days when playing was legit so yeah uh, that's all we really had um, as far as questions for you uh, is there anything else you wanted to say while you were here well I'm happy to be here mostly because uh, it's been a long time since the story finished and I didn't think that it would go on for so long and I'm happy that uh, you did the show and you reviewed my story mostly because it wasn't expected this at all and it was a nice thing I'm uh, very thankful to both of you for uh, giving me a good smile for more than once with the uh, with my own story and uh, with your interpretation. Also, I hope uh, you, Rob, prepared a pony pun of the week because I'm uh, totally wanting it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, I, I do have a pony pun of the week. Um, Look at the man with the plan. Um, and you always need a, a plan. And the pony pun of the week is uh hold on hold on wait a minute wait a minute you just you you skipped all form and formality what's what's I wrong am, with i am not the showman here you are the showman. however so however show. i will say that since my son is likely sleeping in the other room we're gonna have to do a very muted version of this so my apologies my mzinga so okay it is time for the pony butt of the week pony butt of the pony week, week. Pony butt of the week, yay! <laughs> so, uh, do you know what happens when a reference or some kind of title um, is referential to the object itself in Equestria? Do you know what it's called? No. It's no? eponymous. Oh, no. <laughs> the eponymous. <laughs> eponymous? <laughs> eponymous. This hurts just right <laughs> <laughs> oh and i do Ooh. believe that is as terrible as we're going to get pony pun why do you hurt so good um exactly. so exactly uh, you know when, when you need your fix <laughs> you can you know it hurts but you can't do it without <laughs> my <laughs> thing I do want to finish on something, and I do want to say, I know you were thanking us for doing this, but I wanted to thank you. There have been very few pieces of literature in my life that have elicited such a, a powerful response. And I, I walked into maybe the first chapter or two of the story having an idea of where it was headed, um, but the complexity of the characters and the development over time and the writing improved such that by the end, the last couple of chapters, I, I truly was... Um, taken quite aback emotionally, and it really struck a chord. Um, I mean, especially being a parent, it strikes a chord. But uh, more than that, it's very well written, and the themes um, extend beyond just one story. They're themes that speak to the human condition. Well, in this case, the pony condition. Equine um, condition. Yeah, equine condition. <laughs> um, but it really was very beautiful, and it was wrapped up very well, and I thought that it is a... 
I, I Chris and I talked about this. I think this is a very, very well written story. And if somebody can get past, you know, the well, I'm not a brony and I don't understand, or you know, it's just weird. I think if they would allow themselves, they would really enjoy the story. Um, I, I, I certainly did, and I would recommend it to others um, to, to give it a try. Well, thank you very much. I, this is a, I, I appreciate this a lot, and I, I will say something that I write every time, and uh, uh, I will say it for once. Uh, and this is for you, both of you, and from everyone who read the story. Everyone you read Pink Eyes and you got to the end, you make Puppy see her mom. So thank you very much to everyone who read the story. That's right. Oh, I love that. Okay. Well, uh, so it's about that time. Um, I want to thank you very much, Mimezinger, for taking time with us to um, to do this so that we people can get a little more of an understanding as to what the story behind uh, thank you. Puppy is and who created Puppy. Uh, well, thank you for making this possible. No problem. I, I'm very grateful, very grateful. So, for those of you listening at home, don't let this be the end of the conversation. Not only are Chris and I both available in YouTube and the comments on the Folly of Man podcast on that website, but we have a Discord, and you will see in the description below that you can join our Discord, and we have a lot of fun there. Lots of memes, great conversation, incredible debates. Heaven forbid I ask people if they have Fallout 76, and it starts this crazy Fallout debate. Um, but we have a really good time, and... Mime Zynga is is often in there as well. So if you have any questions for him, you know, I, I feel like this community is the most approachable and reachable of any fandom I've ever known. Like, it's so incredible that you can, one, find like-minded people, but then talk to the authors of some of your favorite stories. So I would encourage you all, if you enjoy what you've listened to, to come hang out with us on Discord. That's really where the fun's at. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 It's all over but the cry